Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Program Today I Learned Svelte Series. We are going to be going ahead and doing creation, updating, and delete on comments on our posts. We also have a new API endpoint to pull back all of the comments for a given post, uh, as I mentioned previously, to load everything. And um, we are going to go ahead and refactor a lot of this code because every four is just in the index. Well, we want to use more components. We want to make sure our code sets become more organized and more flexible. So we're going to do that. Let's dig in and see our current project. So we have our list here and see kind of cleaned up a little bit here. We have the number of comments. And if I go into this one, type in new comment. I just type in something there. Submitting, you can see it updated the comment here. Shows it. If we go back, you can see it says one comment as opposed to comments. So a little bit of cleanup. Um, and we can go ahead and just add a, a quite a few if we want. I'm not a huge fan of the little save success up here. We'll change that in another episode. Probably make it a toast or something. And once we hit to the five mark, I have this little view more button. And right now it doesn't do anything. It's going to load this common SQL true thing here. But it depends on if you have JavaScript on or off. Actually, actually, this left it on for true for now. So comments true is going to show back everything. Otherwise, when we initially load, we're just going to show the five. If we go in here to our applications. We go ahead and disable JavaScript. We we'll load this page. Still always have our five displayed here. View more links still works. So non JavaScript users will be able to go ahead and view all the comments. We'll go ahead and fix up their ability, ability to comment in another episode. Um, but that's it for this episode here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm David W. Parker. I have a Patreon account. If you like content like this, that would be awesome. Support me as well as uh, buy me a coffee. Um, and I have a newsletter as well. You can check that out, programmingtil.com. Thanks. So got a new prettier file. We don't need to look at that. The readme was modified as well. So here are the new files that are important. Our comment card, comment form, postcard, and our post form. We have our, a new helper modification. We've changed our indexed. And we have our post slug. So let's go ahead and look at the helper. This is the only thing I have uh, done is give it a word and count, pluralize it optionally, include with count false to not include the number. So I, just a simple logic to go ahead and display that lost or the yes or not. Um, post slug. So main thing in here is we're going to go ahead and check if we have this comments equal true in our params. So page query get comments. So that's this right here. Comments equals true. We're going to check that. And if it's true, we're going to change our URL to include all equals true, which is all equals true is what our API endpoint is expecting to get all of the comments back. Otherwise, it will only return the most recent five. So that has changed there. And then uh, added some information here about um, what we're going to be posting. So we have this commentable with an ID and a type. And we have the handle destroy post. We're going to, after it's been destroyed, we'll give us some timeout and then we'll redirect to the main page. This other handle destroy, which will be for the comment, uh, I have not implemented yet. So you can see you can't edit the comments yet, but we will be doing that shortly. And then handle save is going to be the method used to dig into the comments here and append the latest. And this is going to be coming back from a dispatch. And then we're going to go ahead and modify the comments count, which is the comment count displayed right here. We have our alert success messages up here, which I said I might change. And then we're going to say we have a post. So this is the slug. So we get the post from our API query. 
drops through down into our export post here. Noting that we're importing all of these new files. And then here, we're going to say if post edit, so if it's in edit mode, show the form and have it have type of update. We're going to bind the post to it. So that allows us to make changes within the post form and it'll be automatically reflected here. So for uh, example, if we're uh, editing or not. So if I go up here and I'm on one that I have own, so I'm on this one, you can see the edit. I can still edit right here on the post. And same thing with the delete. That was what I just mentioned about the redirect. I'll do that in a second on a new one here. New post, post. I go into this and then I click delete. I'm going to delete it and then redirect. So, and if we go ahead and save it, it's going to ch uh, change it to post uh, edit. It's going to turn it off. Same with thing with cancel. And those are both going to be um, events as well. So, and then otherwise, if we're not in edit mode, we're going to show a card where we're also going to be binding the post, sending an errors uh, success as well, as well as the handle destroy post. So again, we'll look at each of these two uh, the post form and the post card each. And then down below here we have our comments. So where we're going to toggle our form. If we're going to show the form, we're going to say comment form and say it's type of new. This look, should look very similar to the post form above. Uh, but we're going to bind the commentable. That is the thing that is getting a comment. In this instance, a, a post. Go all the way back up here and you see type of post with post ID. And then we're also being binding it with the errors and success. And then the handle saved. Handle save here based on the saved. Otherwise, we show uh, form cancel. And then within each comment here, we're going to go ahead and have the comment edit. And of course, like I said, don't have that quite yet implemented. But we'll go ahead and just implement it in the background another one. It's going to be doing the same thing as this edit here, though, where we take it in the edit form. It's going to bind the comment that will be binded to it and go ahead and have it be in the update form, as well as the comment card, which is binding just the comment right now. This would all also eventually have the same thing as the post card, where we're going to have the ability to destroy it from the comment card. So again, this is iterating through each comment going ahead and displaying whether or not it's an edit form or not. Finally, we have this new if statement down below. We're going to check the length, and if it's greater or equal to 5, and we don't have comments link uh, in our params up here, we don't have it, then we will display this view more link. And it's just going to be an uh, href with comments true. See my to-do here, Once so the backend doesn't have pagination yet for comments. So once we have a pagination, we can go ahead and use that with an on-click handler and prevent default to allow us to load less data. Because as it stands right now, when you click that, it'll load the entire post and the five comments again, as well as the users. And it doesn't need to do that work again. It just really needs to load the newer comments. But our API isn't ready for that yet. so. Once that is implemented, we will add that. So that's the major changes here. Um, the same thing applies in the index, but the main difference is we just have post cards and post forms. And so we scroll down here, we have the same handle destroy and a handle save for a post. In this instance though, we're not redirecting when we destroy everything, we just go ahead and remove it. And then the handle save is going to add it to the newest posts. Scrolling down into our list here, we have our post form, type of new, handle save, cancel, we'll go ahead and hide the form, iterating through each of our posts just like we were. And all of the logic again is within this post card and post form. So this right here is going to be identical to this here. 
Now you don't have to do this. You don't have to allow a user to edit their post in the post list if you want. Um, you know, maybe your application, you don't want them to go in and be like deleting and editing here. You want them to go to this page or another page entirely to edit. Uh, maybe that's how you want to do it. Uh, this is just showing you how you can do this nice and easily. So that is it for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at these post forms and postcards. Cards probably one of the more simple ones. We want to make sure we have the dispatcher here as well as our session and API because we'll be able to delete from here. So all of this is the same logic that used to live in the index. And the main difference is, as once we're done, we want to dispatch a destroy event with that post. So anywhere the post card is handled, we have this on destroy with handle destroy. And up here, on destroy, handle destroy post. These methods will get called with this dispatch. So this is the destroy, so on and then destroy. We'll go ahead and call it with a post being uh, passed as the event detail. So if you look in here, we don't need it. And then if we look in this one, use the event detail to grab that post. Then down here, all of this is just the same display that we had before. We just moved it into this file and I, I might have cleaned up or used pluralize down here. So very, very simple change. Go ahead and look at our post form. We're going to have create event uh, dispatch again. Our slide is now in here. Uh, everything else is the same. We're going to have a post. We're going to make sure it's set to undefined because if it's a new one, it's not going to have a post yet. And we're going to go ahead and say if it's a post, meaning if this is an update, we're going to go ahead and set the title, content, and published to the attributes of that post. So that way we have those in our form. Our handle submit here is just going to build out all of our data. And this is going to check if it's type of new. Otherwise, it's going to be the update because we have two different API endpoints, one of which takes in the ID and is a put for the update. The other is a post. And then otherwise, and then again, in our update, if we check it successful, we're going to go ahead and know that we have the update. It's going to uh, update the attributes. And then we're going to go dispatch that saved event. So again, looking back at our two here, we have the saved event. This one is actually not even using it because it doesn't need it. This one, we'll go ahead and handle the save here. So the edits don't need it. The new form does need it. And that's because it's going to append it or prepend it to the beginning of the list. So this data here is the post. And it's going to go ahead and put that post in front of all the other posts when you make a new one. That is what it's doing here. So that's why this is automatically created right there. So that's what that dispatch does. And then we'll set our success message. Again, we're binding through to these. Um, so that is what this is doing here. And that allows us to set that success message and it'll actually display where it's supposed to appropriately inside here. So when we do this update on the success, the index knows to show it. We don't have to do any, we don't have to send it in our dispatch or anything else like that. Our post form uh, basically looks the same. The main thing is, of course, I have this, a little bit of logic here on if it's a new. I want to show this. Otherwise, I don't. Um, there is a brand new thing in Celt uh, as of a couple days ago where you could pass in some CSS variables. I might be able to use that to get around this. I'm not sure. I'll have to explore that. Um, and then we're just binding the title. We're not binding through to post.attributes.title and post.attributes content for the update. Everything is done directly on these variables as the others are set through this if statement here. And finally, we still have the cancel dispatch. And everything else is the same here. I also check a little logic to show if we want to say save or update within our submit button. Comment card 
as well as the Comet form are being the same, or very similar. Comet card is a little barren at the moment, because um, I haven't added each of those uh, new things for editing and deleting. But you can see it's the start of what it would look like. And this will ultimately end up looking very much like the postcard, assuming you want to do inline editing like this. Uh, maybe you want to make force the user to do it somewhere else or throw it in a modal or something else. I, I'm not sure how you want to do it. Um, what we'll end up doing is we'll do the inline thing like this. And for non-JavaScript users, we'll add a link where it'll go to like post he he edit and it'll show that form. Um, but for now, uh, just barren. The comment form though, however, is going to look a lot more like what you're used to. We have this comment undefined. We have a commentable. This is going to look like the post form again. We're going to say, hey, if it's we have a comment, then set the body, because we're in edit mode, basically. And then our data here, we're going to have a comment, our body, and the commentable, which is the type, the post, and the ID. Our new will go ahead and call uh, the post without an ID. The update will call a put with an ID. And then if we save successfully, we're going to dispatch the saved event with the JSON data, which is that comment. Finally, down here in our form, we have the handle submit. Um, we check and make sure we have the proper classes showing, body, and that's it. So a good bit covered here. Um, we don't have quite everything implemented yet, but you kind of get the gist of it. We have a lot more organized um, endpoints here. We don't have a bazillion nested things, and you can see how clear this is, and it's a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to work with. So we'll continue to refactor our code and make it nicer. We will continue to clean up the application and build it out. I hope you like and subscribe this, and go to my uh, programmingtil.com and sign up for my newsletter. Support me on Patreon or uh, buy me coffee if you'd like, and have a good one. Thanks.